part two of osmo regulation. So we've got to the point where ADH had been released from posterior excuse me, posterior pituitary gland in response to water levels in the body dropping. Of course, we could and we should be talking here about um, water potential as well. So if we were talking about a um, dilute solution, in other words, one with a lot of water in it, not much solute, a dilute solution would have a high water potential. Remember that little symbol? Is that wrong gun, is it? There we go. A bit better. So high water potential for dilute. The more concentrated it becomes, the more salt or more solute, sorry, you put into it, you are lowering the water potential. So we could say that ADH is released um, in response to a lower water potential. Okay, what's it do? Well, it travels in the blood down to um, the kidneys. And this, this is another confusing part, I think, because of the terminology that's used, but we'll, we'll try and deal with it. It comes down um, in the capillaries. I'm not going to draw this thing, so why not? There's my capillary. And the region it acts on is in these cells that sit um, it, it uses the term in the book uh, the walls of the collecting duct which is true but the problem is people then start using the word wall and talk about cell walls now animal cells do not have cell walls remember in year 7 we did all this so be careful, although ADH acts at the walls of the collecting duct, remember this is, um, here's my nephron, loop of Henley, goes into the collecting duct. The, the walls of the collecting duct are these bits. It's like saying the wall of an artery. You don't think uh, the, the cells that make it up are the walls, but you're just calling it the walls. So do be careful here. Inside of these cells, there are vesicles, which contain... I'll make this a bit bigger in a second. So if I, I draw a larger version of this. These vesicles in the membrane on the outside contain these proteins called aquaporins. Okay. Now it turns out that normally these um, this is going to diffuse across. The membranes of this wall here, so this is be where our, our filtrate would be coming down, our liquid, um, mainly urea and water of course, that's all that's left now, some salts, it would be flowing down here, past here. The walls of the collecting ducts are pretty much impermeable to water. Now, when ADH is released, and it diffuses across to these um, cells, we get a um, reaction, let me just magnify this bit, so this time I'm going to magnify the wall here. If we were to look at it, what you actually have is um, receptors in the membrane. Remember that hormones don't use, or these kind of hormones, these peptide hormones, um, don't go in to the cell. They have a receptor site. And then we get the, a reaction inside. So things like cyclic AMP, those hormone reactions we went through. There's an enzyme cascade goes on. It's enzymes that are um, involved in this. If you want to look at the stuff on cyclic AMP, that might you know, refresh your memory. But that's what happens. The ADH comes down here into the receptor, which causes some kind of enzyme um, pathway in here. And it causes these little vesicles to move to the surface of the cell. The vesicle moves along, and then the vesicle will fuse with that membrane, which now means the aquaporins are part of or integral to that membrane. And once the aquaporin is there, water can flow through it. Aquaporin, water pore, if you like. Okay, um, and then it can. It actually doesn't matter, I've drawn them very close, so it actually diffuses into the tissue fluid and, and back in. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But this is the key mechanism. ADH into the receptor site on the, mem uh, the, the cell surface membrane here, it will cause these vesicles to move towards the cell surface membrane where they'll fuse with it. The aquaporins are now part of that membrane. 
what happens when the ADH um, is we stop releasing it or we're not releasing as much, these membranes fold back again. Um, a bit like endocytosis, you remember that, where, where we take things in, same kind of idea. And they'll, it's just a reverse process. So these little vesicles go back into here uh, and, and wait for um, the next lot of ADH to come. There is a term that's used on here which is half-life. Uh, confused a few people on one of the tests. Half-life here is not referring to anything radioactive. Um, what you're talking about here is um, the time taken for um, a substance, so in this case it's ADH, um, uh, the concentration of a substance, I should say, concentration of a substance to drop to half its value. All right, um, and for ADH, that's about 20 minutes. Okay. Nothing to do with um, radiation here, or indeed games. That's what it is. It's the time taken for this to, to slow down. So once you've released ADH, this is going to be working for um, quite a while. It's not in terms of hours, but if you released it, it would work over um, in, in terms of perhaps a, an hour or so. Usually what you'll find is ADH is never completely turned off. What you're doing is just controlling the levels of it. Sometimes you release more, sometimes you're releasing less, depending on... Um, how much water you need to return.